best instruments we have in the world today, it'll be about 100 times more sensitive and it'll be about a million times faster at imaging the sky, so imaging the universe. This is a big international partnership, 11 countries so far. Headquarters, though, importantly for us, are in the UK, so they're at Jodrell Bank um, Observatory, so the UK is a leading partner in this. And the government has committed a lot of funds to build SKA because it sees it as an, a good exemplar of a big data project. So this is just an artist's rendition of what SKA will look like in South Africa. So there were, would be 200 dishes spread across the desert. Each of these dishes is about 15 meters across. In Australia, the, implement, the instrumentation is um, made up of these kind of ponds of um, antennas. Each of these things we refer to as a station, a circular station, which is a collection of about 256 antennas. And there are 500 of these stations spread over the Australian desert, or well, there will be. Um, so in total, there's something like 130,000 individual antennas that we need to deploy. So that's a huge infrastructure and information uh, connectivity challenge, but we know how to handle uh, gathering the information, we think. This picture here shows what we call the Fourier plane or the, the UV plane um, for the sampling that we get from this, uh, and this telescope or the model of this telescope. And this is a zoomed in version of it. So everywhere that there is a, a, a bright color here shows that we have information on that particular spatial frequency. Um, and the dark blue corresponds to where we have gaps in our knowledge. Now, the important thing there is that basically we have lots of information, but it is imperfectly sampled. And this is a, something we've seen lots of today. You know, our information is incomplete. So this, you may have seen, is the Hubble Deep Field. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. They just said the Hubble Space Telescope, which is an optical telescope, had a blank patch of the sky for a long time. And there are 3,000 galaxies in here. These are all you know, really lovely little spiral galaxies, beautiful little things, you know, inspirational astronomy stuff. If you look at the same field with the current best radio instrument, you see about 15 radio sources, right? It's not really very impressive. But when we go to SKA, when it's up and running, we will see as many galaxies as the Hubble Deep Field, as the Hubble saw. We will start to be in a comparable regime to the, you know, the best ever optical images. But that's really hard because we're going to end up with maps where this little guy down here is a million times fainter than this guy here. But they're all being convolved by this sampling function, which is corrupting the images. And if I misclean this one, if I, if I apply that incorrectly to a part in a million, it will completely wipe out my astronomy signal. And remember, we know about the bright sources. They're what we've already seen. It's these tiny faint ones where the science is going to be done for SKA. So we're in real danger of throwing out the baby with the bathwater. SKA is going to have 65,000 separate frequency channels. We want to divide the universe into 65,000 slices as we go, as we look further away for every observation we make. But this is a big machine with, with lots of um, sampling on a long baseline. So every map that we make has about 100,000 pixels on a side. So it's 100,000 pixels by 100,000 pixels by 64,000 different frequency channels. Suddenly these seem like very big things. Um, if you don't know what 100,000 pixels looks like on a side, it's my 27-inch uh, iMac screen scaled up to be as big as my house. I, I can't look at that and analyze that sensibly you know, during my working day. So this is a, a lot of information that is hidden with, within all these um, things. And many of our proposed experiments for SKA require actually around about 1,000 hours of integration on the target, which will be done in chunks of about 10 hours at a time. So I need to find a way of co-analyzing 100 different data sets. That doesn't sound too bad. You know, we could dream about doing that with current instruments. The trouble is that the SKA data sets are very, very large. Uh, I will put you some numbers on the next slide. But basically, we can't really afford to store all of the data forever. So we have a huge amount of complexity in the data processing, and we can't rerun the analysis. We have an issue that's relevant for this form, I think, that data location, like physical location of the data, is very, very important. You know, the data is going to stay where it gets put because it's so big, we can't afford to pay for the intercontinental fiber optic links to, to send it from one. They might not even exist, actually, in enough capacity. We have to introduce astronomers to a totally new way of thinking about their data. It's not really their data. It's their right to have time on the machine analyzing the data, and then that's it. Um, we want to be able to use the data in many different ways.
We really have bitten off more than we can chew and we do need a strategy for how we deal with SKA because you know, it's a facility that will exist for many years to come. The way that we store and curate and reuse the data needs to be thought about well in advance of us actually getting hold of the data.